The changing landscape of education in the digital age asks us to reconsider what, how, and where we learn. It asks us to rethink how we build scholarly networks and who we bring into those networks. The acts of teaching, learning, and research depend increasingly on collaboration. Collaboration, though, both in teaching and learning, is rarely institutionalized at an administrative level. It is still customary to have only one instructor of record assigned to each class. It is still customary for students to take tests by themselves. This practice obscures and discourages the collaborative work of colleagues, teaching assistants, and students. Likewise, the emphasis on scholarly monographs, particularly in the humanities, obscures the dynamic nature of the work we do as academics. In their book, A New Culture of Learning, Douglas Thomas and John Seeley Brown write, Embracing change means looking forward to what will come next. It means viewing the future as a set of new possibilities. Rather than something that forces us to adjust, it means making the most of living in a world of motion. Thomas and Brown offer a useful exploration of the notion of a collective, which they contrast with the notion of a community. For Thomas and Brown, communities are built around a sense of belonging, whereas collectives are built around participation. Collectives are content-neutral platforms, with facilitating peer-to-peer -peer learning as their reason for existing. According to Thomas and Brown, collectives scale in an almost unlimited way, because they are built around shared practice and are inherently nodal. Hybrid Pedagogy, the journal I helped launch in January 2012, resists totalizing definitions of its mission and audience, working instead to methodically reveal itself and its function over time through the contributions of its community. Our proposed audience for Hybrid Pedagogy is vast. Educational technologists, higher ed faculty and adjuncts, K-12 teachers, the Alt-AC community, digital humanists, the open education community, online instructors, on-ground instructors, student services, and students. We recognize that it is almost impossibly ambitious for us to build a space equally for each of these groups, especially without the work devolving to general interest vagaries. However, we need all these groups in the conversation because the conversation doesn't have the right shape or context when any strand of this audience is excluded. Pedagogy starts with learning as its center, not students or teachers. It is a conversation we have from whatever place we occupy in the collaboration, and ideally that place is always shifting. Teachers must be vulnerable to perform as learners, and our classrooms must become sites of intrinsic motivation, network learning, and critical practice. Hybrid pedagogy imagines a community in which pedagogy is the domain of every learner and teacher, in which participants collectively engage the intellectual strengths of everyone in the room, wherever the room. The Learning Collectives is a space that bridges teaching and learning, that bridges teaching and scholarship, and we must work together to make everyone an equal collaborator in these new academic collectives, including students, administrators, full-time faculty, and contingent faculty. We must work especially to build space from which we can advocate for the most vulnerable among us. We need to gather together in number so our pedagogies, politics, and scholarly work can be safely laid bare.